Brando with Go Hunt. Uh, we're going to be covering some of the common questions in the state of Washington. Washington, these coastal states, Washington, Oregon, California, they're a little bit later in the application season. We're getting, some of us have, have tag results back. Some of us are still waiting, you know, hoping, praying that we, we pull the tag that we want. But it's, it's getting exciting. We're getting down into when we can start scouting, start getting in the field. And with that, we do have a new membership out. It's called Explore. Uh, it's about our mapping platform. So you get access to the mobile map app. So the, the Go Hunt maps on your phone. It gives you access to the desktop maps where the terrain analysis tool is. A lot of the functionality for e-scouting is, is better on the desktop. It gives you access to both of these. So with Explorer, their maps built for hunters. We're, we're a hunting company through and through. Um, a lot of us here in the office had a lot of input in, in what went into our maps. So they are truly maps built by hunters and, and for hunters specifically. Uh, it's, a, it's a great new membership. It's a little bit less than the Insider membership. It uh, doesn't give you quite all of the benefits to, to Insider, uh, but for those guys that just want a mapping application for hunters, it's, it's a good option. So we're excited about that. That'll be coming out this, this spring, summer. Jump on, give it a try. Uh, give us feedback. That's one thing we, we love is, is any feedback. That's how we build our products and, and make them better. So hop in, check out Explore. Jumping into Washington, to be honest, it's, a, it's an expensive state from a non-resident standpoint. Um, it's a state that doesn't hit a lot of applications in our office. Uh, just it's, it's a long ways away from where most of us live. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not super from friendly to a non-resident hunter by the, the financial side. When we jump into some of the details of the draw, it is very friendly to non-residents. Um, they don't have a set quota. You know, you're in the same pool as, as residents. So there are some quirks to it um, that if you live up in that Pacific Northwest, it, it's a great state to hunt in. Um, got, a, got a lot of different species, have some, some decent quality of species up there. Um, but it is, you know, um, somewhat expensive for us non-residents. So. But to jump in, uh, the main question that we get in a lot of these is what type of draw is it? You know, is it a preference point? Is it a bonus point? Uh, Washington is a bonus state. It's, you know, it's, it's a state that squares your points going into the draw. So the way that they reward you is the more points that you have, they square those points. Those are more chances uh, in the draw, if you will. So true, true bonus point state. Um, Something unique to them is you gain a point with every application. So, uh, you know, your first time applying, that is your first application. You will go into the draw with one point. Uh, as, as we know, you know, our great mathematicians here, one point squared is just still just a point. So uh, there's no real advantage that way. They do it. it. It's something different. So when you're on our draw odds and, in, in, you know, in, in the insider platform, you're looking at our draw odds, there is never a zero point level because you no way for you to have a true zero points. Uh, if you are successful in drawing a tag, they do purge your points to zero, but the next year that you apply, you get that one point back. So that is something unique to Washington. Uh, when you look at draw odds, you're always gonna look, you know, you're gonna start with that one point level. Um, in their draw, they do allow four choices. All four of those choices are considered before moving on to the, the next application. So. Um, you know, something, something that a lot of the, the bonus type states do, uh, even some of the random states do. I don't know that I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, it allows you to put a little bit more strategy to it. Uh, I'm, I'm a guy that kind of prefers that first choice only. It helps me kind of know when I'm going to draw tags a little bit better. And I am more of a, a preference point fan or a, a hybrid type fan. Uh, it just helps me strategize multi-year a little bit better. So with that, you can build points on what they call a special permit category. So it's not that you accrue like a deer point or an elk point. They have all of these categories and I wanna say there's, there's close to like over 30. Um, you have like a quality deer application category. You have a buck deer category, an antlerless deer category. You have a category for those 65 and older. Uh, and all of those you can build points for. So you, you do have to pay for each application. And so, you know, as a non-resident, that's where the expense comes in. For each one of these applicants to build a point for, it's, it's fairly expensive. And so that is something unique. You could, you could have, 
five or six different deer points, if you will, in the state of Washington. And so each one of those categories, and we do explain a lot of this in the app strategies that we'll cover uh, as part of the insider membership. So we're, we're just touching high level stuff in this video. If you're wanting more detail and, and a lot more explanation, you know, check out those, those application strategy articles. We dive into, into all the detail here. But um, another question that we get, uh, you know, a lot of people like hunting in groups, parties, different things like that. So group applications or party applications, as a lot of us call them, they do uh, a few different things. And so uh, they, they set a maximum group size depending on species. So for deer and elk, they have a, a maximum group of eight. For bear and cougar, it's two. For, for goat, moose, and bighorn sheep, it's a group of two. Um, and their points um, are averaged um, the way that they word it is the points accumulated by each hunter in the group are averaged uh, and are applied to that group application. So they do average the number of points. Some states will go in with the lowest number of points. Washington's one of those that gives you the benefit of the doubt. They average a point pool. So hopefully you don't have that one guy in your group that just drags you down to a bad average. But um, again, one thing that I did mention a little earlier that's unique to, to Washington um, they do not have a non-resident quota at all. There's no cap, there's no limitation, there's no quota. A non-resident in their draw process is equal to a resident. And so you can apply for everything that a resident does. You, you, you know, you accrue points with residents. There's no different whether they, they look at you as, as a non-resident or resident. Where they make that different up is the cost. So it's real expensive for non-residents to apply and build points. Uh, therefore, it, you know, there's, there's not a ton of non-residents in the draw, but for those that are willing to do it or those that, that live up there close that, that want to venture into, into Washington, they do cater to you somewhat in the draw. You know, a lot of the Western states out there, you know, are limiting you to, to up to 10% or they set a certain number of permits aside for non-residents. Washington's not one of those. They're, they're letting you into the draw with everybody. So that is a benefit to Washington, um, something that they do give to the non-resident side. Those are the main questions that we get in Washington. If you do have any other questions or comments, drop them in the section below. Uh, we'll get back to you. We'll try and answer them as best we can. And, and thanks for watching.